G'day folks, it's Rob here. This week's video is a couple of Q&As from the comments sections in YouTube. We'll be looking at external solids lifting outlets, also be looking at why people's bell siphons float and answering a few questions about fish breeding in the system. Now this is all from a live stream Q&A we held on YouTube last weekend and thank you very much to everyone who came along and partook of it. I will be doing more of them probably once a month on YouTube the day before I hold my supporters hangout which is more personal. It's uh, where people hop online and we can actually talk to each other face to face. Um, so yeah, check that out, the supporters pages if you're interested. Links are down below in the description. Just quickly, this video has got a lot of B-roll added because it's a lot easier to explain with pictures than um, just my hands moving around on the live stream. So I'll stop nattering on and we'll jump into the video. So to get into it, a couple of questions from the comment sections. First of all, we have Stephen. Uh, how do you deal when the fish lay eggs in the system? That is really not an issue for us here in Australia because our native species don't tend to reproduce in um, small little backyard systems. I have heard legends of that happening in larger commercial ones, just what people have said on forums and whatnot. I do know that you folks over in the States uh, who grow with tilapia quite often will find little fingerlings um, floating around the place. People that I have seen in the States who breed their fish tend to get a breeding couple and they'll put them in a aquarium off to one side. The females will mouth brood and then they um, collect those fry, rear them up a little bit larger and then pop them in the system. The folks I've seen who do that tend to rotate their fish fairly quickly. I'm quite happy to let ours grow well over a kilogram or two pounds here, whereas um, a lot of those folks will try and get them out around about the pound mark and that way they've always got a certain size fish going through their systems. Uh, for folks who um, it just happens in their system, I know they've turned up under raft beds, they've turned up in radial flow settlers, um, all sorts of places in some tanks. So it's just one of those things. Certain species will do it, others won't. So I hope that helps. If you are interested as well in seeing how the um, Aussie fish are bred, uh, the jade perch in particular, I went up and saw the perch man, Bruce, and I'll leave a link uh, below this video and you can suss out how our jade perch uh, 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 bread so he can sell them to the domestic market here in commercial quantities overseas so I find all that stuff very interesting and I hope to do a uh, bit of a catch up with Bruce again and bring that to YouTube as well Warren E actually asked the same thing do the fish breed or do you always have to order them I should order yes I do need to order in uh, fish and yeah as I said before Aussie fish check out Bruce's video solar mx6 g'day Rob can you recommend a low maintenance fish for growers that want to focus on vigorous plant growth and not necessarily meat. Um, well, my go-to here in Australia, because it sort of depends on where you are as well, um, but my go-to here in Australia is pretty much all carp. Um, carp species includes goldfish and koi if you're in the southern states. Uh, they can handle the cooler temperatures as well as the more extreme ones to a point. Um, so yeah, they're, they're a great little fish. Those fish are definitely feasible and will grow fast. Uh, in saying that, I do know people have just kept barramundi um, and other native fish, barra up north in Queensland that is, not in Melbourne or Tasmania. They've kept native Australian species even though that they don't eat them and they donate them to family and friends who do partake of the odd fish here or there. So that could be something to look into. The other thing is if you want to go for a smaller system, you could use just normal ornamental fish, things like guppies, gudgeons, um, firetail gudgeons, uh, a good one for little aquariums here in Australia. Rainbow fish, rainbow fish is another good one. Pacific blue eyes here in Australia, um, they're another good one. If you're looking at a smaller system, you could pack a fair amount of fish in there and um, fairly easy maintenance wise, fairly hardy. Uh, best thing to do, I suppose, would really be inquire at your aquarium for your local climate and conditions and see what they recommend. Just explain to them that you're a nutty aquaponicist and you're trying to grow some plants with some fish poop and um, yeah, see what they recommend. Oh, Bianca's just mentioned, watch the size of your pump and how you design the system. Very true. If you have the pump in the fish tank and you've got tiny wee bitty fish, you're gonna end up with fish all through your system. So yeah, you might wanna look at um, some sort of a filter over the front. We found gudgeons in the radial flow settler that were in the sub tank. Anyway, uh, that's a different story. So before we jump into the next question, I just wanted to thank all the folks who gave us their awesome feedback on our Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide. I added a new module, a downloadable, uh, looking at uh, building a chopper flip aquaponics system the other week. And so far, everyone's been really impressed with it. So I love to hear the feedback, even if it's negative, because it helps me tweak it uh, for further versions that I can replace the older one with. 
Um, so thank you very much. If you are interested in checking out the guide, there will be a link below in the description, one will probably pop up here as well, that takes you to a page on our website that explains in greater depth what the guide is all about and the different languages you can follow along in. We've got Chinese, um, Hindi or Indian, uh, Spanish and Portuguese, so suss it out if you're interested. 1995 US. That's enough about that. Uh, let's get back to the aquaponicking. Now on to media and grow beds. Um, Jamison has two turns has asked, hi Rob, where can I get bulk expanded clay beads from? Um, they're pretty much all readily available from hydroponics stores around the world, as far as I know. Uh, and one big tip I would give you is to shop around and find the best bulk price. Um, fairly often, if you're buying five bags or more, you will get a little bit of a discount from a dealer. By the way, six to seven bags will fill a 300 millimeter or one foot high cut IBC bed. So you'll be looking at seven bags minimum or six to seven bags minimum if you're making a chop and flip style IBC system. Um, so yeah, just to give you some idea, three bed system, what's that, 20? You're looking around, around about 20 bags and anywhere up to $45 a pop, that can be a lot of money. Um, so definitely shop around, shop around find the best deal. Uh, the other option is to look for things like um, scoria, um, expanded shale, uh, lava rock, even pumice, um, fairly light media if that's what you're chasing. I haven't done a real um, good shop around on the prices but I do know just from local folks um, who have bought um, scoria which is volcanic rock here in Australia they found it um, dramatically cheaper than the clay balls. A little bit rougher on the hands but you know such is I suppose. Rightio, MC Times. Um, hi, been watching your video and on the paid version so that'll be the guide thank you very much to everyone who has purchased the guide by the way really do appreciate the support i'm working on the bell siphon and the cycling of the aquaponic system this week so hopefully that'll be up very soon uh, there's a download bits and pieces that go along with the videos but anyway link down below check it out if you want not sure where to comment on here but, um, yes there is a comment section on the um, guide um, there is a place where you can message me and if you message me through that um, section of the guide I can pretty much will get to you within 24 hours uh, most of the time it's just a matter of hours except for when I'm sleeping and yeah I can help you out straight away if you leave your comments in the comments section as many of you know I may not get for them get to them for a number of weeks I've been slowly catching up again this morning um, but yeah, you can leave messages there. Now back to the question. How do you stop the bell siphon from flo floating? Um, installed everything and then was filling the grow bed to do the water test, but the bell siphon keeps floating up. So I think I can give you a better explanation than what I did on the live stream. So with most floating bells, what I've seen happen is the drain pipe is elevated slightly uh, from where the stand pipe joins it. And what happens is it creates a bit of a water lock down in there. Now, because not all the air from the standpipe can escape, uh, what happens is the cycle, cycle goes as normal and the bell has a little bit of air underneath it that it can't expel out through that drain line, so it tends to float a bit. At the end of the cycle, once the bed is fully drained, because the bottom lip of the bell is sitting under that water level a little bit too far, no air can get down there under the bell to break the siphon. Likewise, because you've got a bit of a water lock in that inverted drain underneath the grow bed, no air can get back up through the standpipe either. So you end up with a bell siphon that just continually floats until you can rectify that drain. Uh, now the drain fix is really easy. All you need to do is get it to sit either level or slightly downhill and that way all their water can exit easily and air can travel back up that drain pipe as well to help break the siphon. Another issue may be, and I have seen this um, with people just starting out, is your actual discharge pipe underneath the grow bed itself, maybe underwater in the sump tank or fish tank, depending on which way you've got your system set up. And that means only a very small amount of air can be forced down the drain pipe due to the weight of the bell, and you'll end up with a little bit of an airlock in there causing the bell to float. If you've got your drain from the bell siphon going down to the ground and then running across and then up again, to discharge into a sump tank. There will always be water in those lines there. At times air can get stuck above that water level in the drain pipe and as the bed fills with water that can cause the bell to float a little bit. Doesn't happen all the time that it can be an issue. One way you can fix that is to have a large communal drain for all your grow beds to discharge into. Uh, in our case I actually use a 90 mil or three and a half inch uh, stormwater pipe. I have a grow bed that discharges into that because the um, drain pipe would just be too long to flow back into the sump. 
and that allows air to go back up and burp the system and the bell sits nice and flat. Uh, it also means that if you have that larger diameter, you can take more flow from more beds, have it discharge down through the ground and then up over the edge of a sump tank or a fish tank. And because the um, entrance port is way higher than that tank or sump, it won't flow backwards and overflow at any point in time. So I just thought I should add those two scenarios in uh, for folks who may still be having issues if their drain isn't set up like the first example. Very noisy magpies. Next, we have Michael from the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, Michael. Oh, I like the use of the full height IBC container as a fish tank. Not a problem. Could you use ACQ lumber uh, for the lid without harming the fish? Um, ACQ is an alternative to the CCA, copper chrome arsenic uh, wood treatment. It's still got copper in it though. So I would be a little bit hesitant um, to use it around the system, uh, frog in the throat. Um, I, I wouldn't put it in any position where water would fall on it and then fall directly into the tank because it it could elevate the um, copper levels in the water just as a start. There may be other chemicals in there that um, may be toxic to the fish and plants as well. I haven't looked into it mainly because there's copper involved in the um, in the process to make it a weatherable product. I personally wouldn't use it. If you are going to use it, make sure you give it a really good paint, cover every little bit of it, and then um, build whatever framework you're going to do after that. Um, even if you paint it afterwards, water can get in between joints where timber, bare timber is sitting on bare timber, and it may over time leach something in there. I did have a good look around to find some studies to say if it was harmful to fish or whatever. The best I found was a bloke on the forum saying, well, if it won't kill humans, it won't kill fish. Not necessarily true. Um, we don't have the same metabolism as fish. For a start, we're warm blooded. Yeah, definitely something I wouldn't do. Um, now he's asked something else as well. Um, this is something that I get a bit. Why not utilize the IBC container drain? As most of you will be familiar, there is a little valve outlet in a little alcove sort of recess in the base of an IBC center. And what you can do is you can attach a little bit of pipe to come out from that, then add a stand pipe. So basically an external solids lifting outlet, and that will dictate the height of the water in the fish tank itself, because water will only reach as high as the top of that pipe. Once that pipe overflows, the fish tank water will go no higher than that. One downfall of that um, that I see straight off the bat is the in, in side of the fish tank you have no way to really uh, create a meshed off area that can be cleaned out readily on the inside to stop small fish going up and out so just down here in the base of the ibc and as you can see this ibc is a storage one the valve actually broke off quite some time ago now in regards to setting up some sort of screen on the inside of the ibc here um the the logical choice for me would be something like these foot valve screens. Now, first of all, we have a little um, hurdle to overcome and that's this little hump uh, just in front of the valve. So you would have to heat that up and squash it down using a heat gun, being sure not to overdo it because you could damage the seal between where the valve sits in there. Remember, there should be a valve there where the valve sits in there and the plastic because that is a separate section of plastic. It's not a part of the IBC um, that's been fitted in there and you can get that nice and flat. And then you could probably fit in a 50 mil um, or two inch um, foot valve screen. If not, a 40 mil would definitely fit. And then I suppose the only way you could probably um, get them to stick in there would be using some sort of fish grade silicon or maybe a Sikaflex. I'm fairly sure. Check the packet. Is um, fish safe? Um, yeah, so that's, that's about the only thing I could think of. Now you run into a few troubles um, if you connect one of these in here because it would have to be glued in. Uh, because I'm fairly sure you can't plastic weld PVC to HDPE. Um, so you would have to Sikaflex that in there, seal it in there. Now if you end up with clogs or anything like that, how are you going to get down here to clean it? Uh, you can't remove it, uh, remembering that you're reaching down over a metre or three foot full of water um, with fish in the tank swimming around and all that sort of thing. So that could be a bit of a pain in the butt um, trying to clean this. Another thing, even this 40 mil, um, little fingerlings could quite easily fit up through there which mean you would need to screen this again. And as I've shown in my solids lifting um, outlet uh, video recently, you put a bit of mesh over there and that will quickly clog up with um, crud and other debris. And you're gonna have to reach down through here, take that off, clean it off and put it back down there before any fingerlings decide to go for a journey through to your um, grow bed or solid settler. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's my big concern with something like this. The way I'd probably go about it, um, if I was going to do it, and I don't recommend you do it personally, have external slows, is I would try and stick some sort of mesh on here with a stainless steel, 316 um, stainless steel, with probably a six mil or quarter inch gap in the wire mesh. And that way, if anything does clog up against the surface, you can just pop a broom down and just give it a bit of a sweep. Um, keeping in mind you will be stressing your fish and all the rest of it um, but that's about the only way I can think to keep this um, safe from any fish going through there I mean if you were to have larger fish say like we've got in our system at the moment you could just leave that open but the problem is getting them to that size first where are you going to keep them um, but yeah I, I just really think for security's purposes it's a lot better to have your solids lifting outlet on the inside of the tank and you can remove it quite easily with the fittings at the top and then replace it after it's been cleaned or whatever and it also means you can replace the bottom drain section with whatever fitting you want just slip them on and slip them off so there's a couple of thoughts from me on um, yeah how you could secure this if you were going to go with the external slow keeping in mind that i don't recommend it second issue i do have with it uh, especially if people just stick the pipe on on is on the external pipe work where you have the um, drain the solids lifting out like coming up on the exterior if you do not make sure that is definitely glued down the bottom definitely glue it um, and attach to something firm either a post or directly onto the side of the ibc cage itself you could very easily have problems with people bumping the pipe work and if there's a leak down the bottom you're going to lose all the water in the fish tank there is a possibility of just you end up um, killing a fish by lack of water um, that's why i prefer the internal um, solids lifting outlets if i can um, it was basically going on to say um, it would require some sort of removable interior screening so there you go to stop the sediment blocking it up uh, but you wouldn't need a uniseal or bulkhead fitting um, at the top of the fish tank for the solids lifting outlet yeah but again the security of having that inside the tank is um, what i prefer as i said before bianca and i will be doing more of these live stream youtube events at least once a month day before the supporters hang out um, so keep an eye out for them i will be giving you notice uh, a couple of days notice before they go to air anyway but it will generally be the last saturday of every month uh, around about 10 30 aussie time which is early evening uh, late afternoon over there in the states for you folks who are interested in coming along and yeah, if there's content like this that i think will help others i'll edit that down and release it as a separate video as well uh, but that's enough of me gas bagging on thank you very much again to everyone who has purchased the guide uh, don't forget to check it out link in the description Thank you to everyone who's supporting us on the different um, places that you can online, be it the YouTube members or our patron page at uh, Farm Your Own Yard. Thank you very much, guys. Links to them also down in the description. And of course, you wonderful folks who just come along every week uh, just to thumb up the clips and leave a comment down below. Um, I really appreciate that. Uh, if you could share them around to your uh, favourite hobby groups, that'd be even better. But I will leave it there. Do hope you're all well and happy and your aquaponics is booming. And I'll catch you next video. Cheers all and happy growing.